Boxing King Media, powered by the Riyadh Season and BYD. Mr. Mark Ramsey, it's a pleasure to be... Good shit. Drop the mic. Um, it's a pleasure to be joined by yourself for days away from, would you say, the biggest fight you've been involved in in your boxing career? I think so. I did a couple of good ones uh, uh, in the last 30 years, but... Uh like the, the 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 fact that it is for Bell, all the pressure that uh, coming from the media from outside, I believe yes. What was the second biggest? I'm just curious. Probably Pascal Opkins, and 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 Montreal was something big also. I did a couple of uh, undercard uh, Canelo undercard with David Lemieux also was very big uh, in Las Vegas. You know, you just told me off camera, I think fans would find this interesting that obviously when you speak, I would assume you're like French, Canadian, but your ancestry goes back to Scotland. So I'm just curious if you could kind of educate the fans, you know, uh, what, what ancestry have you got that, you know, where your surname comes from, Ramsey? Actually, I don't really know. I know like the, my grand grandfather's from Scotland, but uh, it's a long time ago. <laughs> you can't do the Scottish accent, I don't? I don't know. I cannot understand. Okay. My English is very bad. Like English is good. Uh, just a little bit about Arto. It's well documented his journey when he walked into your gym, and you know you, you've known him a long time. You've almost kind of seen him grow as a fighter. I want to know, as a person, how was he on the first day he walked into the gym compared to the man today? Very. I I told him many times like Arto is very stable, emotional, and and also. Uh, how he was back in the day and how he is today. It's very stable. It's very about the same guys, family, family man, and somebody who put all his focus on his work, professional boxer. Do you, you know, because sometimes tr fighters learn from their trainers. You, you as obviously a bit older than him as, as well. Do you ever learn anything from him or pick up anything from him? Oh, you mean technically and... Uh, no, just as a person. Oh, of course. Like he... he it's the first time that I re, uh, I see a fighter with that much discipline, and I I just push that that push the limit for the the next generation after that. Like the the objective is to be something around what Arthur is today, like very disciplined like this, and very de dedicate to his uh, his job, and also also in in boxing term, like he's coming from boxing Russian boxing school, and uh, he brings some different technique that what we uh, teach usually in North America and was very interesting for me to uh, to this do this uh, this uh, all this road with him that's fascinating you know when i met you guys in london after the anthony yard win he said to me that he, to celebrate he's just going to go see his friends and have some food but you guys as coach a a fighter do you have a relationship or friendship outside boxing as well you know how do you celebrate the wins after the fights myself yeah with him we don't do like even after the fight we pass like let's say 10 12 weeks together when, when it's over he, he want to have some vacation from me we don't really do stuff outside of boxing together he go with his friend his family like he told you uh, good food and that's it that's all for me for myself i like to go fishing on my side and just relax and uh, go back to work after that that, that's interesting that because a lot of trainers and fighters have relationships outside so you guys is strictly business strictly business and I, I I like those kind of relationship I don't believe you you should be a friend uh, I'm a boxing coach I'm not a friend I have a job to do and I have to do he pay me to do do it the best I can and of course we have some affinity and we we laugh together we have fun together I, uh, I try to help him uh, in Montreal the, 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 the more that I can but Really, I try to keep that line, professional line, with him. Have you guys ever had a fallout? What do you mean? Yeah. Like a fallen out, like in a disagreement? Oh, of course, all the time. All the time. But Archer is not somebody who's, uh, you're going to tell something and he's just going to do it. You want to know why and uh, uh, what, is, what is the objective with this uh, discussion. And we, we speak and we argue, but we always, we are together for 10 years. Like we argue all the time, but we always find a, a, a final common uh, accord. That's fascinating. You're obviously a boxing historian, you're a boxing fan. If you could compare Arthur to one of the past greats, somebody you could compare him to, who would you compare him to? It's fun. I don't know. In terms of style, nobody really. But I remember the first time that I was in the gym and we was he, he had maybe like one or two professional fight. And uh, I had Jean Pascal at the time who was world champion. He was fighting Pascal and uh, he was fighting also, he was sparring also Eleder Alvarez, who was number one contender in the world, just beat Kovalev not long time ago after. And Rosenberg looked at me and said, we maybe have the new Roberto Duran. 
And this is the way I see it a little bit, a, a, a good uh, boxer, puncher, pressure fighter, but somebody who can box also. That's, that's fascinating. And then just lastly, um, we saw Eddie Hearn did an interview yesterday and obviously Arto, all the interviews he's done this week, he, has, he doesn't say a lot of words, a lot of his answers are quite short. And Eddie uh, Hearn, if you saw the interview, he said something like he felt maybe he was being a little bit disrespectful towards the fight and he should talk more and if he was with him he'd be a superstar. The media you mean? Yeah. This is the nature of Arthur and you're never going to find somebody more respectful than him. For, for himself, for the fans, for he always agreed to, to talk to people, to shake hands, to sign uh, some glove or some, some stuff like this. But this is his nature, he's not a guy who's uh, going to talk a lot and try to disrespect the opponent. This is very professional for him. And uh, you know what, he's a professional boxer, let, let the, the promoter do the promotion. Fair play. Um... So I was going to say, if you win on Saturday, what's the celebration going to be like? There is no celebration because you go back to your fishing and he goes back home. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, okay. Uh, any other fight you're excited to see on this show? Almost all the fight, but the, the point, this fight is so is so big and that I have my main focus is going to be on Archer. I cannot, back home, I will take the time to look at all those fights. Uh, the undercard fight, of, of course, but uh, right now I'm, uh, I'm really focusing on what we have to do Saturday night. Uh, just last question, obviously your family man, how much impact does this have on you? Because this is a fight that you know yourself, people will judge him. And they'll judge both these men, Bivol and better be on the winner of this fight. Because whoever loses, they'll say, right, you know, this win was overrated and all that. Because this is what the boxing fans are like. So how much pressure and how are you dealing with the pressure and how's your family coping with it? Because you must have been locked in camp for the last 10 weeks. Of course, but my wife understands like the, the, the job that, that I do and uh, she knows me from a long time. Same thing for Arthur. He, get, uh, he, he was far from his family for the almost like 15 years. Uh, if we had the first training camp, like maybe close to 25 uh, weeks, like, but they know what we're doing and we're doing that for them at the end of the day. And, uh, and for the pressure, listen, I told you Arthur is very professional, but he also uh, aboard every fight, like he, he go to every fight with the same perception, the same, this is, we have an opponent, we have a, with weakness and strong point, we need to analyze and to, to find something and just to win that fight, this is the objective. The outside pressure, like it's there, but at the same time we're so focused about uh, um, achieve or, or, or objective that we don't really uh, we don't really deal with that right now. We just apply every day that what we have to do. This is the last question, I promise. Uh, I spoke to John Scully before, and he shared some interesting stories about Arto as a personality. I know you've said a lot about his discipline, but apart from his discipline, you've spent ten years with him, so you must know so much about him. Is there anything else you've learned from him, or or you admire about him as a person, as a character that you share with us? What I admire, it's uh, the, the, the thing that I, I say all the time, it's he decided to be a professional boxer. From that starting point, every single decision that he made in his life was in direction for his career. He never cheat one time about hours of sleep, about what he eat, about how, how many training that he have to do. He push everything to the limit all the time, like he commit himself fully. Thank you very much, Mark. Pleasure, pleasure. and hope to uh, wish you all the best. Thank you.